slop a hunk off of this uh, plate for the tool post for the uh, autometric. Um, so I'm just going to actually make two cuts. I'm going to slice a cut or slice this way and just leave that kind of a square and then this strip here will strip it down to uh, um, make the tool post plate. So then I'll finish all the edges and surface it and uh, it gets a bunch of features. So let's mark it off. So my width, I'm going to, there's a width and a length that's rectangular, so I'm going to take the narrowest bit off off of the total length just to save a, a little bit of material here. So I want it a little bit bigger than, uh, oops, than what I'll be, uh, what I need. I can finish the edge. It's actually pretty square, so. So to go through this mill scale, you need a pretty, uh, this is a carbide tip scriber here. You can hear it breaking up as I go through it. So, uh oh, that's a bad looking line there. <laughs> so yeah, classic, it looks like it moved a little bit. So now, <laughs> the question is always, well, which line is it that I'm following? So I tend to, I'll deepen it up a little bit. And then, just so I don't invite Mr. Bozo to the shop, I'll darken that one a little bit, just so it doesn't show up as good. But I'll probably still drive it anyway. It, it, you know what, it actually doesn't even matter, because it's whiter than it needs to be at that point, so. Okay, so. Let's go over to the bandsaw. We're going to uh, slice that off and then we'll slice this other way and then uh, let's make a tool post plate. Okay, so I'm going to use the vertical bandsaw here to mow through this thing. Um, what I want you to look at when I cut is how effective this is, okay? So I'll be pushing on this pretty good, but um, it just gives you an idea that with the correct blade and a, a good saw, you can, uh, you can march through even inch thick plate like this, 25 millimeter plate. So let's go for it. So that's just a little bit, um, but you know, I'm already an inch, inch and a half or something in. Um, I'm not going to bore you with this whole cut, but uh, um, well, maybe I will. <laughs> no, I'm going to turn the camera off and save bandwidth there. So uh, anyway, I'll make this cut, then I'll make this cut, and then this is our uh, keeper piece right here. Okay, so there's the plate we sawed, and um, this is where it's going to mount. Basically, it's going to sit down onto this surface, but you can see there's a bunch of humpty bumps under there uh, that we got to deal with. So we have to relieve this side of it, set it down onto this uh, this surface here, 
put some counterbores in it and a few other things. So uh, um, anyway, let's that's the uh, uh, the project there. Um, we have to do a special relief for this uh, this lever over here on this side. Can you see, can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then um, Mr. Toolpost is going to mount on top of that, and it'll have a couple of positions that it can mount in. So uh, that's the general idea. And uh, let's let's uh, let's get to it. All right, let's square this up at least. And then I can set this aside. I got to take some measurements, and um, uh, so we can make the reliefs underneath. All right. So I don't think it matters right now. We're going to put this uh, the flame cut edge down. Let's see how it sits here. Okay, so it's pushing it up against the back, so that's that's fine. So we'll secure that. And then we're going to use a, uh, this is a Ceratip um, uh, face mill with TPG 322 inserts in it. And these are Cermet, uh, Cermet inserts, which is a, uh, um, a very tough uh, carbide. Uh, it's got uh, little threads of ceramic in it, I believe, uh, is how it works. Anyway. Uh, um, this is a MTP 90 150-75W, uh, inch and a half, okay, with a three-quarter shank. That's what half of those numbers mean. And this thing, um, I've had this thing for years, and it's just this dog simple little cutter. And, uh, but it just kicks butt. Um, uses these cheap inserts. And uh, <laughs> leaves a really nice finish. So you guys will see that in a sec. And you can run these pretty fast. And that's 1600 RPM there. All right, so it's just. It's just skating across there. Let's zero that. Let's take a 25 thousandths cut. Um, it should be okay. The chips are going to come off in the other direction. I'm checking vibration here. Seems fine. You know, this is thick enough that uh, it damps it out. I'll bring you in closer for the uh, so you can see the finish. Uh, I think we got it all in one whack there, which is pretty good. Let me bring you in a little closer. Okay, so there you can see that finish, and it, it's really nice. Okay, and there's where I sped it up a little at the end. There you can see where it's sped up. So now what I'll do is I'll just deburr that, and then I'm going to flip it over, and I want to clean this other side, which is flame cut. And uh, um, you know, flame cut has its own little set of problems, but uh, we'll take a look at that too. All right, so here's the opposite side, and this is a uh, this is flame cut here, and I'll, and I'll illustrate one of the problems. I don't know if you can hear that, but that file is just skating off of that. That stuff is hard. Um, this came from a scrapyard, um, so I'm not sure what it is. I'm pretty sure it's just plain mild steel. I don't think it's 4140 or anything like that. But 
this, depending on how it's cut, if it's cut with oxy fuel or um, uh, plasma or whatnot, th these surfaces can be, they can damage your tools pretty easily. And that just gives you an idea that that slag there uh, on that edge is, is, pretty, uh, is pretty hard. So, uh, but uh, our little Surmet cutter here is really not going to have much of a problem with it. So I'm going to take another 25 and in fact I got a fair, let's see, I got a fair amount to come off of here, at least I'm supposed to, oh maybe not, uh, I can't remember if it's seven and a quarter or seven and a half, <laughs> better look at the drawing eh? <laughs> okay it's seven and a quarter so uh, I, I got quite a bit of material to come off of here. Um, I'm at seven and a half now, a little over actually. Let's just take it. Let's debark this, and uh, but you'll see how I'm actually gonna uh, fast forward this, uh, and I don't mean with the film. I mean with the rapid traverse, and then we'll cut this. So that was holding down the, the rapid traverse and the finish, you know, because I'm only spinning at 1500 or so, there's a, there's a, a pitch between the, the sweeps of the tool, um, but it's still smooth, okay? So since I don't feel like wearing these down my shirt, I'm gonna cut in this direction only. Oops, oh, did I bump the camera? Uh, maybe not. Or maybe I wasn't pointed at the quite the right spot there, but you get a look at the cut now. So, okay. Anyway, uh, rinse and repeat. Uh, I got to take a fair amount off of there, uh, and you can see it's going to come off pretty quickly. So, okay. So this is uh, uh, 1500 RPM, uh, 100 thousandths depth of cut. Pretty cool. Now you don't want those chips down the uh, down your blouse. Let's just say that. And that's just glassy smooth, beautiful. Okay, so we want to do these other sides, and we want them perpendicular. So it's not super fussy, but uh, let's just go ahead and bump this in. So. So basically, we're just gonna we're gonna null the uh, null the indicator. Let me uh, reset there. Grab some travel. All right, getting close. Okay, I went a little too far there. Back up a little. At it again. Okay, still a little too far. That looks pretty good. All right, let me snug this up. 
Okay, give it another sweep. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now we'll we'll um, we'll take a skim cut on this, just to, enough to clean it up, and then we'll flip it over and uh, knock off this flame cut edge on the opposite side. It'll be parallel to this one, and it's perpendicular to these two, which are parallel to one another. So you got to be uh, parallel before you can be square, and um, that's how it goes. Okay, so here's the uh, um, autometric tool post plate, and I used the four jaw and I, I faced off one side, but um, I thought it might be interesting to show how I set this up and then a couple little details here. So let's uh, get this thing out of here. I don't want to, I don't want to drop it. Okay. Get out of there. So, let me set that down. Um, the first thing to note is these copper jaws here. I had machined the the edges here, um, and I didn't want to uh, dink them up with these four these four jaw serrations. Are pretty aggressive, so you want to put a little shim in there. Anyway, uh, this is the the copper um, sheet metal jaw cover that I make. Um, and you see it has this little loop around here on the back. Um, so this actually works both directions, right? So I can, when the jaws are turned around the other way, for OD work, I can grab here, but, um, well, it's all OD work, right? But when the jaws are flipped around, I still have a little bit of coverage on the back side um, um, to catch this plate. So let me mark a center line on this plate here. Uh, I'll change the camera a little bit, and I'll show you how I do that. But it's just it's, it's dog simple. So, uh, but I'll still show it, and then we'll we'll center this other side of this plate up, and then we'll face it off. All right, it's a problem. Steel, man, it's heavy, right? Let's get that up in there, and then I'm just holding it in by hand. I'm just gonna kind of snug these two jaws up here that I loosened. At least I think it's the two jaws that I loosen. Okay. Go around a little bit. Okay. So, <laughs> okay, there I can see it. So now let me, uh, I'm going to bring up just a pointer here. Get this up close. Just going to bring a pointer up. And you, how well can you see that? I don't know. Um, Anyway, uh, when I spin this, I can see where I am in relation to the, uh, the little X that I put on there, okay? And um, so I can just push it around uh, where I want. If I can see the dang thing. Oh, there it is, okay. So, go down a little bit. And this is just, uh, this is just so my, uh, my facing pattern uh, kind of comes out in the center. Of the plate. Oh yeah, that's actually looking pretty good. Okay, so same thing down on this one. Slacken that one a little. Okay, I'm kind of liking the look of that. So now what I want to do is just kind of snug these up. So all four tight. And then the last thing I'm going to do is tap this back into the uh, into the face of the jaw, so that uh, you know when I face this off, it's parallel. All right, let's get that out of there. Get this out of the way so I can get a lick on it. I'm going to use my uh, A-bomb knocker. Adam seated. Okay, and uh, so now we're going to use a uh, um, left left hand turn uh, CNMG here, and we're just going to face across that. Okay, so we're centered up, and uh, we're nice and tight. Uh, I had to rotate the tool post a little bit to catch this outside corner here, and um, 
uh, with the travel, so because of the diagonal. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to come up and just touch the plate without it running, and I'm going to zero off there. And I'm just going to take about ten thousandths off of this uh, um, to start with. I'm I'm trying to preserve the thickness, but uh, I want a nice. Uh, um, you know, a nice cleaned up finish. I'm going to take all that mill scale off. So, I don't know. It's a facing cut. There's not a lot of uh, mystery to it. Uh, we're running about 550 RPM, which is pretty fast, but uh, this is a Sandvik insert that can, uh, that can handle that kind of surface feed. So, let's, uh, let's go for it. Okay, I just run it up manually until it touches and then engage. So. So it's ringing because it's an interrupted cut, and then we get in about here, it'll be continuous, it'll, the sound will change. You can see it in the video there, but at the corner of that cut there, it looks really shiny, uh, which is a you know a little bit of an indicator of uh, what kind of finish we're getting here. We can't really see it there because of the interrupted cut, but you can see that little intersection that's given us a little bit of a clue. We'll start to see it more when we get there. That's it. So ten thousand cleaned it up. You know, it's the finish is really good in this region here, and then as the surface speed changes, as we're getting towards the inside, the finish kind of goes to shit. <laughs> anyway, that's all we're doing on that in the lathe, and we're gonna pop over and uh, take some measurements uh, so we can put some holes in that. Okay, so here's our. Uh Here's the holes that we that we want to map here. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You know, I could put it up in the mill and I could go around and indicate all that and do all that if I wanted it real precise. Uh, in this case, these are just basic mounting holes. But what I care about is getting a, a good center on these threaded holes. So what I've done is I've kind of screwed some shoulder bolts in in a few places. And what these do is, even if the thread axis is a little bit crooked which a couple of these are um, you can run them down and then they kind of they the shoulder lands on this uh, flat on the plate and they they straighten up a little bit so you can get a a decent center off of them or an average center in that case but uh, um, anyway uh, so we got a little chicken sketch going here I've taken a couple measurements already um, and I'm using this edge here and this edge here as datums and um, um, actually, I want to take this this guy out here. <laughs> okay. Of course. All right. Well. All right. I don't need to get that out to sit. Um, so I'm measuring over to here. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the step of the uh, the caliper here against that shoulder. Okay. Um, and then I'm just going to measure up square to this. Uh, um, the diameter of the shoulder bolt, right? So what do we got there? Five inch, 234, plus half of that diameter, and that gives me a good uh, uh, a good center line there. So anyway, it's kind of rinse and repeat, and work my way around, and there's a couple little dowel pins here that we'll have to accommodate. And then uh, we'll have, I wanna um, cut away underneath the bottom of the plate, 
So the plate sits down flat on this, so we'll have to figure out where all this stuff is too. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And uh, you know, there's no great mystery here. Uh, so I'm measuring off of this edge and I'm measuring off of this edge here uh, ordinately to uh, determine all these uh, locations of all these, all the little business on here. So let me get it done. Okay, so we're trying to get this one now here. And so I have to use a little different technique that might be interesting for you guys. Um, so this is our datum. And what we want to do is compare this surface to the center line of that, right? So um, kind of hard to do with calipers. You know, you could probably, actually that's probably not a bad way to do that. Um, although the elevations are different. So if I tip the tool, I'm gonna get an erroneous measurement. Um, I don't wanna measure off of this side and subtract. It just adds another uh, complication. I really wanna measure from my datum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the square, but I'm gonna use it in a different way. I'm gonna use it like a transfer tool. This is what we call it, where we're transferring a measurement to another instrument. So what I'm gonna do here is get this against my datum nicely. Okay, and I don't have a lot of contact here, so it's kind of suboptimal, but I think I can do pretty good. Okay, and then I'm just gonna slide, slide this out until I intersect that lightly. Try it a couple of times, make sure I get the same same deal, and we'll snug this down. Okay, then what we're going to do here is now we'll use our calipers and we'll transfer the measurement. So hence the name transfer tool. So I don't have to read this, I don't have to read the square real accurately, so uh, I just use it to transfer. So I got uh, 6 inch 256. 6.256, enter, 25, oops, 0.3125 plus, so, oh, screwed up there, 6.256, 6 enter, 0.3125 plus, 6, 6.568, okay, that's my number, all right. So anyway, that's a, an illustration of using a, uh, a transfer tool to, to pick something up. Now this one's a little harder here, since it's low, it's in the shadow of this, uh, this stiffener here. Um, so what am I gonna do with that? Um, I don't know, I gotta think about that one a little bit. Maybe I will measure it in relation to this, this hole here, um, and that might make it a little easier for me since it's, you know, <laughs> pretty difficult to transfer that up and over uh, uh, in a meaningful way. So anyway, transfer tool.